6db splitters or 6db combiners because you can use them both ways around of course um, basically uh, if we're looking at those two port examples that i have here we have an input port if we're looking at it as a, as a splitter we have our input signal goes in comes out of two ports same here just a different configuration we have a, a triangle how we would call it in in europe and uh, or delta or americans like to call it and uh, down here we're having a star configuration uh, that's the two options you have uh, for resistive splitters and that's what we're going to talk about 6db resistive splitters and just for simplicity i'm only going to show you the uh, the uh, 6db splitters with with two ports and uh, number one those are resistors for all the american viewers i put that up here those funny boxes are uh, used all over the world as sign for resistors and for everyone else around the world, this is what Americans use. And uh, I know my drawings are horrible, but it looks, it's a close approximation of what Americans use. And I guess the history behind this are uh, wire wound resistors. So Americans kind of draw them like inductors, but with uh, sharp corners instead of those nice uh, rounded arcs. But anyway, that's just an aside. Now, resistive splitters are the only splitters that provide the bandwidth coverage all the way down to DC. And that makes sense. If you have resistors, DC is going to pass. You're going to have a loss in it, but it's going to pass, obviously. If you have any kind of, uh, of um, other elements like inductors or capacitors, uh, depending on how you arrange them, you're not going to have a DC pass. And that's going to be material for another video, uh, different and, and less lossy uh, type of splitters slash combiners. It's going to be a topic for another video. Anyway, um, like I said, you can use these uh, in reverse. Of course, you can combine two signals, just apply them to the output ports and have your combined signal as some come out of here. Now, one step back to the bandwidth and there being resistive components. Uh, why are they called 6db splitters, I guess, goes right along the line of that. Obviously, you have a 3db power split. 3db power loss means halving the power. And it makes sense if we split our incoming signal onto two ports, we're obviously going to have, ideally, half the power coming out of each port. So that's where your first 3db are. And uh, since those are resistors and it's a real resistance, a real impedance, all of a sudden you're going to have real resistive losses. And that's where you're going to burn another 3 dB. If you do the math, go at it, have fun. You're going to figure out that there's about 3 point something dB getting lost as real uh, loss in the system. And that's something to keep in mind if you're really working with higher powers and you're just trying to do a, a quick and dirty combiner. You know, that's something you do on a workbench if you're trying to hook up two signal generators into each other and you don't have a professional splitter like, I've got this little one right here. It's a mini circuits resistive splitter. You've seen it before on my uh, VOR. Um, was it VOR? Yes, uh, the VOR simulation using the uh, LeCroy signal generator. I used this one here to combine the uh, two baseband signals into the FM modulator. And we're going to tear this one down to have a look at uh, which configuration this one uses. Like I said, there's two different uh, configurations. Um, one of the main differences is the resistors you have to use. And even though this looks like a 2, I swear this is my Z, as in Zulu, for uh, the impedance. So if you want a 50 ohm input and output impedance, your resistors in this delta configuration would be 50 ohms accordingly. And in the star configuration, it would be a third, so somewhere around 16.6 uh, ohms, something like that. Uh, both values are available as precision, precision resistors because they're so commonly used. But uh, if you're trying to build something real quick in the lab because you don't have a professional unit like this handy, uh, you're probably going to put 200 ohm resistors in parallel out of your box and build something like that real quick. Um, that's pretty much the intro on uh, resist resistive splitters and combiners. They do exist with more ports. We're not going to look at them today. And uh, that's pretty much it about that. Uh, let's tear this one down, have a look inside. And then let's have a look on the spectrum analyzer with the use of uh, two function generators and see how it works, if it works as expected or if there's anything that we have to watch. 
Um, like I said, the bandwidth is theoretically DC to sunlight. I wrote this down here. Obviously, uh, the higher you get in frequency, all of a sudden you're going to have all kinds of parasitic inductance and capacitance on your circuit design. So there is a factual upper limit, but your lower limit is always DC. And uh, that's a feature that's very often used when you A, have to pass DC or B, have to pass very, 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 very low frequencies. And uh, th that happens quite often. So that's where you use a resistive splitter and just don't bother about your loss. Uh, you know, it's an extra 3 dB you're introducing, but it, sometimes you have to. If you have to pass low frequencies or uh, DC, you have no other option. There's nothing else you can do. So that's what you have to do. Anyway, let's move over to the bench, tear this one down, let's have a look inside, see which configuration Mini Circuits is using, then let's hook it up to the Spectrum Analyzer. So here's a close-up of the resistive splitter that I was holding up uh, in the previous segment of this uh, video. Um, you can see it's uh, spec'd for, whoops, sorry, maybe I should actually hold it in the camera, there we go. You can see it's spec'd for DC to 2000 megahertz. Um, that's not too awfully high. Like I said, those resistive splitters definitely get higher than that. But uh, you'll see a few construction reasons why this frequency may be limited. Um, it is a mini circuit splitter, of course, like I said in the last video. New sponsor, very happy to have them on board. And uh, that's all that's inside, really. And there's not much to it. Down here, this here is your, your common port. And uh, right here you have port number one, port number two or rather two and three if you want to call this port one but those are your two uh, split ports and that here is the uh, the uh, common port so like I said you can use those things either as a splitter put in your signal right here and get a 60B reduced signal out here or out here or you can put two signals in here and in there and get a combined some signal out of there there's not really much to it if you look at it PCB is uh, super simple uh, connectors are directly soldered on. Uh, looks really nice. Those are gonna be 50 ohm resistors. Let me check. Can't see that. Huh, look at that. So uh, they have 49.9 uh, uh, ohms is what they're actually saying. And that's probably making up for, uh, well, there's two options. Either they were less expensive, more readily available, and uh, they were just uh, close enough it really doesn't make much of a difference if it's uh, 50 or 49.9 ohms or somebody really did lots of math and uh, took into consideration the uh, the real resistance of the traces involved and uh, the solar points and all that uh, i don't know if it's a uh, if it's a result of heavy math or if that's just uh, a convenience thing but in either case uh, works uh, very nice and that that's all there is to it so a few u splitters or combiners and they're the resistive type. This is what you're probably dealing with. All right, let me put it back together, hook it up to the uh, signal generator and an oscilloscope, and let's look at the behavior a little bit closer. Okay, the setup is uh, very straightforward. I'm using my LeCroy wave station here to generate a signal at 145 megahertz with an amplitude of one volt peak peak. And of course, I have set the instrument to uh, a 50 ohm impedance. Uh, very careful if you play with this sort of stuff. Make sure that you set your instruments to the right source and load impedance, else you're going to have funny things happening. From there, we're going through this coax into the splitter. By the way, I only put this little kink in there so that it doesn't uh, reach all over the table. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that. And uh, that's the same splitter that we looked at a second ago. And from there, I'm going into the channel 1 and channel 2 inputs of my uh, MDO. 4000B and uh, as expected what we see on the display is our 145 megahertz signals and uh, the amplitude in volts is half of uh, the amplitude that we're allegedly putting in or close to half at least I mean we'd expect 500 millivolts here and this is pretty close we see a little imbalance between the two ports but that's all cool that's all within the limits that's all what we expect and again, just make sure that uh, if you do something like that, you set the termination of your scope to 50 ohms. If you don't, just look at the difference, and all of a sudden you got a screwed up measurement and uh, signals that appear higher than they are, and you don't know why, and uh, may invent a machine that generates power of free energy because you can't interpret that number correctly, and people will laugh at you, so don't do that. 
Now, uh, it's as simple as that. And if I vary the input power here, let me get over there. Let's have it 500 millivolts. What we expect, of course, is our voltage as reflected here on the MDO to half as well. I mean, for each channel to half. All right, let's put it up to uh, one volt and let's look at a simple thing. I mean, what happens if I, let's zoom the other way, if I disconnect one of the ports here? Let's, let's see. So let me remove channel one. And we see the scope has issues triggering now because it's set to trigger off channel one. But uh, the amplitude on the remaining port, of course, increases, as you would expect. If you think about it for a second, if you think back about the circuit drawing that you've seen earlier, uh, scroll back to the, to the beginning of the video if you have to. It does make sense, and uh, vice versa. If we remove this one, we have a higher amplitude on channel one, and, of course, nothing on our channel two. All right, uh, that's the whole thing in uh, the splitter configuration. Now let me hook it up the other way around and let's see how we can use it as a combiner. All right, again, I'm using the uh, WaveStation 3000 here to generate two signals. Uh, on channel one, I'm generating the 145 megahertz signal that we've used previously, and I added a 145.1 megahertz signal on channel two. Uh, the signals both have an amplitude of 0 dBm as displayed here and uh, from channel 1 and 2 I am going directly into the splitter ports and via this uh, nicely curled coax into the MDO 4000 and this time I'm using it in spectrum view so that you see both traces here. Uh, first we see those markers at negative 6 point something dBm so right the level that we would expect we started out with 0 dBm 6 dB loss would put us at negative 6 dBm and uh, just to prove that's what you're seeing if I disable channel 1 the trace disappears and if I disable channel 2 the other trace disappears um, we could probably see some intermodulation products if we would look close enough and if we would adjust some parameters here uh, but that's uh, material for a whole nother video. Now I hope this gave you a nice overview on how uh, resistive splitters and combiners work, uh, what they look like on the inside and what you can use them for. If you have any further questions just post them right below this video and if you liked it make sure you share it, give it a big thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you uh, don't miss any future videos. See you next time.